If we haven't met before, my name is Marlene Luciano Kerr, and I serve as program coordinator for Crossroads. If you've heard of Crossroads, but you're not sure what we do, our office is home to the honors program, study abroad, early college, which is our dual enrollment program for juniors and seniors in high school, as well as GVALS, our visiting artist and lecture series. But closest and dearest to my heart is working with our international students, who my colleagues and I have the privilege of knowing and serving through their time here at Geneva, and what an enormous pleasure it is to do so. My husband Eric and I have made Beaver our home for the last 18 years after meeting as music students at New England Conservatory of Music in Boston a mere 35 years ago. Our life together, along with our daughters Kaylin, Liana, and Emily Joy, has been and continues to be an adventure in love and service to others with music as its soundtrack and the subtitles always on. Subtitles, yes, you heard right. In spite of having lived in this country for 36 years now, everything around me reminds me that this is not where I'm from. You see, I am originally from Puerto Rico, La Isla del Encanto, a tropical paradise in the Caribbean Sea just 100 miles long by 35 miles wide, where it is summer year round, life is slower and might I say, a little friendlier. And the warmth of its waters pales in comparison to that of its people. A world away from the cold and gray skies of Beaver Falls in March, that's for sure. A kind of place many dream of visiting someday and I get to call home. Growing up on my beautiful island, I was raised Catholic and enjoyed the privilege of a private school education and a lifestyle that comes with affluence and privilege. My father was a successful businessman, so pursuing an, a college education in the United States was a given, just like my brother and sister had done ahead of me. The only difference was that while my siblings were away in school, I watched my parents commit their lives to Christ and go through a season of deep transformation in their marriage and in their personal lives. It was during this season that I saw for the first time the transformative power of the gospel and the dawning of my mother's unbreakable faith in Jesus, which deeply impacted me and continues to be my greatest inspiration. So there I was, 20-year-old transfer student, like many of you today, registering for my courses at the conservatory, filling out form after form by hand, mind you. <laughs> Far away from home, nervous, vulnerable, and excited all at once, not really knowing what to expect. That first year away was difficult, to say the least. The pressures of learning in a different language, communicating with others in said language, which was not my own, navigating life among a sea of people like me, but not really, missing home and everything familiar, while trying to keep up in a musically rigorous and competitive environment took such a toll on me that I was unable to thrive academically, although you would have never known by looking at me. I hid my vulnerability behind living la vida loca. And let me tell you, living la vida loca yielded nothing but heartbreak and disappointment. Yet little did I know that that God-shaped void inside my heart the one St. Augustine speaks of, the one I tried so hard to fill with all the wrong choices, would only be filled by Jesus. It took being far away from everything I knew and searching in all the wrong places to realize it was him all along, the one who I heard my mom calling out to all those long nights while she waited for my dad to return home. 
I made Jesus Christ my savior in a tiny practice room surrounded by soundproofing walls that looked like ramen noodles. Repeating my confession of faith with none other than my husband today. I was his first convert and he stole my heart. Life has never been the same. Navigating as a believer in those years that followed was challenging, yet they are among my dearest memories to date. Since that day in that basement practice room, I have discovered that the kingdom of God is a beautiful, iridescent coming together of people from all walks of life, different, unique, and wonderfully made in the image of God, woven together by their love of him and each other. Yet I've also learned that while our differences give depth, richness, and flavor to our lives and purpose here on earth, in Christ, there is no us and them. There's only us. Even though I may look and sound different than you, in Christ, we are part of one body. We, all of us, one body in Christ. Like listening to Aiko play her, musical, uh, her beautiful music, a universal language that speaks of everyone, seeing the pride that beamed from Cholhi's parents when they visited spring break a couple weeks ago, or sitting around a fire sharing stories with brothers and sisters from faraway places like Bolivia, Nigeria, China, and the Dominican Republic, just to name a few, each of us no matter our color, language, or nationality, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Together, one body, we are one in Christ Jesus. A kaleidoscope of colors and sounds reflecting the beauty and awesomeness of our creator. During our years in Boston, I had the privilege of working for the Boston Symphony while my husband completed his MDiv and continued his ministry work. Then came our greatest gifts and teachers, our three beautiful daughters. A new season of parenting and learning and serving, still with the subtitles on, navigating new experiences far away from the familiar, blending cultures, traditions, feeling vulnerable and unsure at times, the same feelings new mothers experience in every culture, in every language, in every nationality. Our differences, I learned as a first time mom, are incidental in comparison to our similarities and how much we can relate to one another in light of our new roles. Once again, the Lord met me where I was, reprising the theme of his grace beyond measure. Have you heard that melody before? Today, I stand grateful for this new chapter at Geneva and the opportunity to pour into the lives of this new generation, to tell of his goodness to anyone who will listen. Not only that, but God in his graciousness has redeemed one of my greatest regrets. You see, not only did I struggle in my earlier years, I actually left school without finishing. And now I have the opportunity to finish the college degree I walked away from all those years ago. As a full-time student in our adult degree program with an anticipated graduation day of May 2024. Wow. <laughs> Imagine that. Me, a college student at the young age of 55 certainly an undeserving second chance. Grace beyond measure again and again and again. Yes, uh, there have been more than a few bumps on the road, yet the Lord is faithful and has provided beyond our wildest dreams. A life of purpose, love, and beauty. Eric, the girls, and I are truly rich. My life is a living testimony of the Lord's faithfulness, and I highly recommend trusting him with yours. Is there anything in my story that you can relate to? 
Do you remember feeling vulnerable when you first came to Geneva? Have you experienced heartbreak before? Have you tried to fill that void with all the wrong choices? Have you felt like you can't measure up but are keeping a straight face about it? Have you experienced God's goodness, his favor, when you least expected it? Have you come to the end of yourself and opened your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? Cristo Jesus. Joy and sorrow come in all sizes, languages, nationalities, and God, God's grace transcends them all. My prayer for us today is that we would celebrate our unity and diversity and begin a lifetime of adventures in friendship in this great kingdom kaleidoscope with no regrets. <laughs>